You're listening to You're listening to You're listening to King Jesus Radio, the official podcast of New Living Way Church. You can stream all Sunday services, Wednesday night Bible studies, and much more. God bless you. Thank you for joining us.
when they call. His pleasure is not his his pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warrior. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who yeah, put hallelujah, their hope in his unfailing love. Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning and we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. For we know, Father God, who our Lord, our God is. And you are the one who sustains us. You are the one who, who heals our wounds, Father God. You are the one who gives us the strength and the ability to be able to persevere and endure to the end, Father God. So we give you honor. We give you praise. Now let us worship you with hearts of gratitude. Yeah. Let us worship you, Father God, remembering, Father Lord, all that you have done, all that you continue to do, and all that you will do, Father God, because you rule and you reign, Father God, and to you be the glory, Father God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that gives us the strength and the ability, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that gives us the wisdom and the discernment, Father God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father God, that gives us, Father, Father the ability to praise you and worship you, even through the pain, even through the trials, even through the struggles, even through the situations, Father God, but also, Father God, in those times of refreshment, Father God, in those times, Father God, where we are on the other side, Father God, as your disciples, Father God, when they were on the boat, Father God, they were going through that storm, it was fierce, it was strong, Father God, but you got them through the other side, and Father, we thank you that each day you get us to the other side, Father God. We love you and we praise you, Father God. And I ask, Lord, that if we have sinned against you in any way, Lord, that you would forgive us, Father God, of all unrighteousness. Cleanse us, wash us, make us whole in you, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, that it is through the blood of Jesus that we have been made white as snow. In the yes, name of Jesus, we Lord pray. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This morning and also to welcome you and um, glad to see everybody that was able to make it in person and say hello to all those watching online um, I also would like to share something um, a testimony of what the Lord has done again like my sister had said there's so many things they're all crunched up but since I'm gonna pray for the offering and for the for the tithes and offering I, I think that um, this is fitting um, so we'll just stick to, <laughs> so, um, uh, how many of you have gone through a process or going through a process of, of things just falling off you, of things being stripped from you? Well, I've been in that process for a while. It's lengthy, but I think that with every strip or the releasing of stuff that's really not supposed to be in my life. God has helped me to take that blow, um, that hit. It's, he's helped me to see and to pray and to, to be at peace. Amen. To be at peace and, he, and truly when the Holy Spirit is called the comforter, he comforts. He's a comforter. So, um, one thing I, I thought to myself, like the last message, that I thought to myself, oh, Lord, what's left? Are you going to strip my, my employment? Are you going to strip my car now? I thought to myself, I really didn't say this or made it an official complaint. It's not official, Lord. <laughs> I just thought to myself. And I was warned, um, my company or that I work for, I've been employed there for 15 years. And... Uh, it's been very, very slow. People have been getting laid off. And I was warned that I might be get laid off also. <sighs> In between all that, I said, okay, Lord, well, I'll train whoever you want to keep, whoever, whoever the Lord or whoever the boss wants to keep. That's fine. But in reality, I, I wasn't too fine. I wasn't really okay with the actions they were taking. I saw it unfair and unfit. And the time did come. The time did come, and, and my boss called me over, and he said, I have to lay you off now. This was two Mondays ago, I believe. 
And I said, well, okay, well, who are you keeping for whatever reasons? Okay, that's on you. Actually, my position was, taking, was gonna be taken away from me to give to someone else that never um, executed that job for any of the length of time. So I had to train them from beginning to end. And I thought, okay, Lord, that's fine. I'll stay there one week. They don't have to pay me, but I'll train. I'll train them, that's fine. But in reality, when I went home, I, I sought the Lord and I said, I sat down and it was just a conversation that I had with him. And I didn't read all my papers, but one of the papers said of the layoff is that because there's, um, there's not a lot of work anymore and specifically your position. And when I read that, I said, I circled it. I got a mark and I said, Lord, but my position is there. That's my position. And I said, Lord, I, I don't like that because that's not truthful. And I asked, you know, Lord, whatever, whatever you have for me, Lord, you've always been my source. That's just a resource. That's just a place that you had me labor and toil so that I can have my daily bread, my blessing, and be a blessing and give to others. That's a, but if you want me to leave, but that's not truthful. That statement, my position is there. You just want, they just want me to give it to somebody else. And I, it was not a prayer. Well, it was. It was just a conversation with the Lord. And, and I just want to share that the next day, that I went because I said, Lord, just help me not to get bitter. Just help me not to be resentful with this guy taking my position and the resources. Um, because to be honest with you, his position had been closed for months. It's actually closed, but the boss wants to keep him there. That's the Lord's blessing. I had to see it that way. I need the peace of God for that. But the next day, the law, um, my boss called me, and, he, and they changed the plan. They said, tear those papers. You're not laid off. We have a plan. Hopefully, it works for the company, and you can stay. Just to, and, and what I wanted to share is that the actual owner, he's not Christian, he actually said, because I, I was at awe, and I was like, what? There was a group of people there that were actually advocating for me. And I see those ministering angels that come and advocate because I wasn't gonna, actually my, my supervisors told me before, you have to defend yourself and you have to sell yourself to the owner because he doesn't know what you do. And I said, no, I'm not gonna do that. If the owner wants to do whatever they wanna do, that's their wallet, that's their money. I'm not gonna tug at their wallet. I'm not gonna tug at anything. That, that was my position. With that being said, the owner said, Nancy, it's been reversed. What was the action was just been reversed. And whoever, all of you that follow in the teachings of the prayer, those were, I think we had back to back about talking about how the edict in Esther, in the book of Esther, to destroy the, and destroy, kill, and annihilate the Jewish people, Queen Esther, asked for the edict to be reversed. So when that word came out, I said, Lord, I hear you. Even though, even though I thought to myself, all these things, what else are you going to strip me from? You heard me. And you heard me, and you said it's been reversed. Yes. Praise God. Yes. So that being said, I just want to thank God and pray for the tithes and offering. Father God, we come before you, Lord, with hearts of worship, Lord, with hearts of surrender, Lord, with having a repentive heart, Father God, to acknowledge you, Lord, in all our ways, Lord, to thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done, Lord, from waking us up, Lord, it seems standard, Father God, it seems like we take it for granted, Father God, but no, Lord, it is you, Lord, that works in us, Lord, and ha with you, you breathe into our lives, and you give us the ability to move on, Lord, with the task that we you have at hand for us, Lord, and we want to thank you, Lord, for waking us up, Lord, breathing your very breath when it, within us and activating, Lord, and, and your Holy Spirit within us, Lord, to guide us, Lord, to lead us, Lord. And we just want to thank you, Lord, for, for the tithes and offering, Father God, given unto this house, Father God, 
that helps, Lord, and that works, Lord, to bringing of the good news, Lord, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, your good news, Father God, to the people, Lord, that can see, Lord, that can hear through this mission, through this house, Father God. We ask you, Lord, to continue to bless this house, Lord, and to take And what the enemy means for evil, Lord, you turn it for good, Lord. You reverse it, Father God, because your word says, Father God, that I was young and now I am old, Lord. But I've never seen the righteous, Lord, begging for bread, nor their seed begging for bread, Father God. And we want to continue to give unto your house what is due to you, Lord, and to give you honor, Lord, and to give you glory, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. (laughs) He's feeling a little under the weather, so I'm bringing the word forth today and just giving God glory and honor and thanking him for the privilege of being able to share, to be able to speak, to be a mouthpiece, to actually have a mouth and and use salt to bring words of encouragement, words of life and light for one another, because that's what we need, not for ourselves, but one another. And I'm thinking about everything that's been said, everything that's been done, time of worship, and how God just prepares our heart. He prepares the land, he tills it. And sometimes we're allowed to, to be part of that, you know, that pressing, that ground, that crushing, because something's good gonna come out of it, definitely. Um, oil, the the joy, the rejoicing, that's two things, right? Joy and rejoicing are the same thing, but the goodness of God, because he is so good. Amen. And the word I'm bringing forth today, it's, a, it's from the Bible, thank God, it's from the Bible. <laughs> Amen. And it's going to be in Matthew 5.13. And I titled this, Preserve and Illuminate. Preserve and Illuminate. And this came about from reading the Bible. You know what happens when you open the book and you read, the Lord just, he hits you with with word, with illumination. And he allows you to to understand little by little what he's saying to us. And this word ministers because it's alive, it's active, and it's sharp. That's what the word of God does. This was written years ago, but how it ministers right now to our heart because we're alive and breathing and the word of God is alive and breathing and we benefit from that breath and from that life. And it goes along with what we've been under, the word we've been under, even in Bible studies with the book of Revelation and how we started with being blessed and then you know, the, the letter to Ephesus and Smyrna and how we're blessed and we know that because we're in Christ and how also the Lord has good things to say to us and about us. He gives us, those, he's not praising us, but he's a, we're being acknowledged, the children of God are being acknowledged for the works that they do, but also a charge about, but you've lost your first love. And then in the book of, in the book, in Revelation, but to the letter to Smyrna, that do not be afraid and remain faithful. And this word came as a process of that. So it's like, it's his word just being distributed, being pressed and coming forth. So Matthew 5.13, we're gonna read, but I, I hope, I'm gonna open up even more with this scripture. What is Jesus talking about? So I'm gonna open up with this and I'm gonna read it. So what, what is Jesus talking about? What is he talking about? So let's go to 5.13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, its purpose, how can it be made salty? It is no longer good for anything but, but, to, but to be thrown out and walked by people when the walkways are wet and slippery. In a bit, I'm going to read a few more of those verses, but you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, its purpose, how can it be made salty? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and walked on by people. When the, when the walkways are wet and slippery. So I'm reading from the Amplified Version. This brought to remembrance the word, but you have lost your first love. And now you're taking, you're picking up the practices of the Nickelodeons. Like, so you were right, and now you're going into um, false worship, false teachings, into things that are contrary to the word of God and what make it pure. So I say, it, it, to me, it, it went hand in hand with it, and 
Hopefully you can see that too. But yes, it's the word of God. So I wrote, what is Jesus talking about? Salt has a number of purposes. Some that are relevant to, to the word specifically because he's talking to the disciples here. Talk about farming. These are the things salt's good for. Farming, preserving, sacrificing, destroying, and fertilizing. So as followers, as disciples, we need to be like salt. And this message was on the Sermon of the Mount. He's teaching the Beatitudes, describing the persecution that they will face if you choose to follow him. Because in, you read about what's taking place here, the blessings, and also just words of encouragement that the Lord is giving words that we need to know. And if we don't keep them, what happens? Then we're not salty. Now we lost our purpose. So it's not talking to the world. It's not talking to the non-believers yet. The word of God always brings judgment to us, to the people of God, to us who know, who need to know, and who choose to follow and believe in him. And not just believe, but also be disciples. You're making a, a bold statement in choosing to follow the Lord. And that requires more that's even within you. Because it takes the Holy Spirit to draw you to do that and to make that confession that, Lord, I'm going to follow you. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, to you I give my heart and my life. Now I'm going to be a disciple. So this word is speaking to us. And I'm not saying that you're not salty, you know, or that you're not seasoned. Because this word could bring a lot of, con not confusion, but a lot of um, different ways of, well, what do you mean? Like you have to salt and flavor the world. That's really not, you know, to add, you know, our seasoning to it, but to keep it preserved intact because we do not want to remove and be useless or tasteless and out of our purpose where, okay, I'm going to remove you from the impact you have now. So it's a charge. Remain, you are to be the salt of the earth because you do not want to lose your purpose. In Revelation, we read that in the letter to Ephesus, and the, do not go your own way and remember your first love because then your impact to the church is going to be removed. Your purpose is going to be removed. And that should pierce our heart because, not saying we're walking that way, but it's instruction and it's a commandment from the Lord. So to be told that we're going to be blessed and forgiven, to be blessed inward and we're peacemakers and we're going to be in a place of joy and rejoicing yeah but also this is going to take place now because you know these things and now you might face persecution following christ is not easy and the whole list can come up it's hard life is hard man i can't keep up we're not supposed to keep up with the times we're supposed to remain and listen be still most of the time 99.9 .9 of the time just Remain, okay? Remain faithful because we do not want to be cut off. And excuses are going to come because it's life. Life is hard. I could say it in a jokingly matter like, life gets too hard. Man, well, it is. But it's doable. It's doable because in our point in life right now, we don't have to go through what many people are going through right now. Physically and ailments, we go through that emotional, psychological stuff, but the persecution that many are facing throughout the world, it's, it's hard and it's real. So yeah, life is hard, but there's a promise. The reward is with the Lord, and he has that reward for us. And we know and we believe that we, we are men, we are being cleansed and we're being justified, and we stand right standing with our Heavenly Father because he says so. Not because we make it up or someone told us, no, the word of God says that. So I'm going to read that again, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its purpose, its taste, its purpose, how can it be made salty? It's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and walked out, walked on by people when the walkways are wet and slippery. So obviously mine adds that little extra thing. So I'm thinking about what happens when it's useless, walked on, trampled, you've heard and you've read, don't throw your pearls to the swine. And I'm, that's not why I'm wearing pearls today, okay? But you do not, if it's useless, then of course it's going to get thrown and it's going to get trotted on, it's going to get trampled, it's going to get pressed and thrashed. You've also heard, don't thread on me, don't tread on me. But yeah, don't crush me, don't walk on me. But if you lost your purpose, then the world will walk on you that way. 
because you don't have that significance anymore. So it's important for us to remain and be the salt. And I'm gonna read just a few things here about preserve. To maintain something in its original or existing state. So we preserve the word of God because that's the goal, the gospel. The words of God endure forever. Everything passes away, but the word of God remains. That is powerful. So we have a purpose to maintain it in its original existing state to keep safe from injury, harm, or destruction, to protect. So that's how you preserve too, to keep alive, intact, or free from decay. So what salt does in culture for our body, it's important and it's significant. And it's amazing how the Lord uses the person and the place and their field, their, their job, a farmer, a fisherman, a laborer, these things that are familiar with. So to say salt, everybody knows what salt is. So he uses what we know to help us understand. God's getting our attention. And it has value. But it has no value if it's tasteless, if it lost taste. And that's pretty, pretty much kind of silly to say because salt really can lose its saltiness. <laughs> You know, I mean, it could get like dry and you're like, oh, this salt tastes old maybe because, you know, air hits it. But it's nearly impossible for salt to lose its flavor. And God knows that. He didn't make a mistake in this comment. But it's, it can't lose its, its nutrient because if, if it has no value no more, like this word is saying here, then it's not getting nutrient. It becomes dead and it stunts growth. And that happens to us spiritually when we don't have that salt and we don't give that salt and we don't preserve ourselves and preserve the land that the Lord has given us, the task, the work, everything that he has given us to do, then yeah, it's going to stunt our growth. And that puts us in places where we are many a times like maybe not, nothing comes forward, nothing comes to life anymore. Things die. But see, it's like a contrast of positive and negative because there's good things with salt and there's negative things. Too much salt can actually kill a crop because it is used also for destruction. It's used for many other things and it's used in examples throughout the Bible because it's important. I opened up with that. It, it has significance in farming, preserving, sacrificing, destroying, and fertilizing. Wow, how can salt destroy? Well, yeah, it can kill a crop. It can destroy land. In old times, in the olden times, the enemies would throw salt on the ground when they want a battle. It's just to kill anything to come forth or to kill the land and then start a new crop eventually. Or also for snow. I, I don't live, well, we live here in California, right? Where I live specifically, there's no snow. But we know that snow, a water, I mean, salt is used to water down the snow. And this made me think about right here in parentheses in the Amplified where it says, when the walkways are wet and slippery. So yeah, it's useless. So it's using its purpose to be runoff, but not for us in our walk. Because we do not want to be trampled on or walked on by people. Especially when God's giving us simplicity. When he's giving us his word. Verse 14. I'm going to share that one. You are the light. Because I did say preserve and illuminate. So you are the light of Christ to the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good deeds and moral excellence and recognize and honor and glorify your Father who is in heaven. All for the Lord, because what we do is for the Lord to be glorified. But we do what we need to do because we cannot hide it. That's true, right? <laughs> and a light, if it's hidden, no one can see it. So it's just like right there in our face. Yeah, no one has a light and hides it. It has to be seen. seen. So don't try hiding yourself. Don't try hiding the light or your good deeds, okay? Because they have to be seen so that the Lord can be glorified. But not proudly, you know, just do it as the Lord leads you and humbly under his mighty hand. So I already read this fact that um, salt is extremely stable. But when we stop thinking about others, when we stop thinking about Jesus, that's when it becomes 
tasteless, it loses its saltiness, and it doesn't have a purpose anymore. So the common uses and importance of salt in our daily lives, such as preserving, seasoning, and enhancing flavor. Who loves that? Oh man, I got this rub, and I'm gonna rub it on my ribs. I'm gonna, not, not my ribs, you know, on the meat. These, these seasonings that I got, I heard about them, these spices, I'm gonna use it. So we're always looking to try something new. A new flavor, a new mix, a new, just, you know, a little dash, a pinch of that. So we wanna enhance flavor. Not always because something's bad. Because you know that a perfect steak or chicken, just salt and pepper, that's it. You could dip it into something else, but just salt is enough for a piece of meat to be excellent. And I wanted to bring a, a griddle right here and actually sizzle something, but, you know, yeah. I was thinking of having that fire extinguisher next to me, but man, you're going to be thinking about food and you're not even going to listen to me anymore. But just thinking about that that smell, but also that flavor that you can almost taste, just by smelling you could taste it, and how I'm gonna bring up a sacrifice because it is a sacrifice. It is a pleasing aroma unto the Lord. So as we're seasoned, we are a pleasing aroma to God. He's being glorified. So in our daily lives, that's what we're using. Well, we need flavor, we need flavor, we need to give it a kick, it needs something. So what it does for our body, our body requires a small amount of sodium. You know that? To conduct nerve <coughs> impulses, to contract muscles, to relax muscles, to maintain a proper balance of water and minerals in our body. And I wrote this because a lot of us have different body intake and might be in a diet or deficiencies or maybe we need to cut back on some stuff. But you know, on the health scale, 55, 550, no 500, I'm adding, 500 milligrams of sodium is what we need for vital functions of our body. But depending on our diets, medical conditions, it varies, okay, but we need it. We need it. And if we want to add something, you know, like sometimes you, you make something, well, I'm going to say I, I because I cook, and then if someone puts salt on it, I'm like, it's already salted and it's already seasoned. But if you're going to add more, that's up to you. <laughs> you know, but sometimes people just go, pff, pff, pour it, pour it, pour it. And you're like, okay, you're going to ruin the taste. You're going to oversalt it, but some people like it. But in our bodies, if we need salt and we're craving salt, because we do crave like sweets, we crave salt, we crave all these weird things. I say weird because, you know, with deficiencies, when you're lacking minerals, you have these cravings. And that's where that comes from, that, oh, man, I need something salty, because we have a mineral deficiency already in our body. You and I shouldn't have that mineral deficiency of salt in our body because the Lord has given us what we need and just the right amount. Now, how we disperse it, it's up to us, but he has given us the right amount to give in his word, in the hope that we have in preaching the gospel, in enduring, and the measure of faith that he's given us. See, a measure of faith. There he's going again with increments, with a salt, with the measure, with you know, just even with um, measuring the plumb line. There's so much in there for us to learn. So salt and water help clean and promote the body. And it promotes healing by osmosis. You want to watch Osmosis Jones? Go ahead. But if, and if there's bacteria in the liquid, the liquid pushes it out. It forces it out, helping to cleanse. And it speeds out. It speeds up. It doesn't speed out. It speeds up the healing, especially on our skin, on our body, our flesh. So that's pretty cool. You, I, I didn't drink water purposely for that, but it does that. That it helps push out what is not good. So we need this. The meaning of salt. You're like, salt, salt, salt. No, yeah, I'm going to keep going on salt. Salt as a symbol, as purity. Salt was used to purify and preserve. In our faith, it's important to have purity and preservation of it for Christ and in Christ. Matthew 5.13 again, if you are, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt lost its taste, its purpose, how can it be made salty? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and walked on by people. That's what happens if our salt lost its taste. Jesus called his disciples, his followers, the salt of the earth 
which signifies their role in preserving and influencing their surroundings. The world, the, the non-believers, our environment, our family, our, our place of work, everything that surrounds us, because that's the land that we're cultivating also, that we, we have an important role in keeping that preservation morally, physically, spiritually, but also for others. Because uh, the Lord, he did it all, not just for us, but for the world. But the world's not gonna know this, right? That's why they have to see it. Our work, what we do, love for one another, the diligence in our faith, that that is seen, that is made evident, and the Lord is glorified. Salt also has a symbol, is also a symbol of a covenant. In the Old Testament, we're going to go to the sacrifice, Leviticus 2.13. Leviticus 2.13. And this is talking about the offerings. There was laws given and an order of how you bring an offering to the Lord and how do you prepare it. In verse 213, chapter 2, verse 13, you shall season every grain offering with salt so that the salt, the preservation of the covenant of your God will not be missing from your grain offering and you shall offer salt with all your offerings. And that took me to a cross-reference scripture in Mark 9, 49 and 50. At first I was thinking, why 49? But uh, it makes sense. Mark 9, 49. Because the offering that we have to give to the Lord has to be seasoned. It has to be pleasing. And this is talking about, I put here like, okay, these are warnings. This is a reference that I put on my notes under a warning. Mark 9, 49 and 50. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good and useful, but if salt has lots of saltiness, its purpose, how will you make it salty? Have salt within yourselves continually and be at peace with one another. It's a, the Lord's commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. It's a commandment of the Lord to be the salt of the earth. So I was thinking, wow, everyone's going to be salted with fire. Yeah, because you can be destroyed with it, with the words, but also the preservation of having the benefit of salt, bless you, in us that we need it. That's a sacrifice. We use salt in our sacrifice. Numbers 18, 19. And this one also, too, it's so important. And it's under the, the duties of the Levites and the priest portion. And a note I put right here is a priestly's portion. Verse 19. All the offerings of the holy things. But definitely make time and read the, the book. Read Numbers. Read Leviticus. So the Lord could bring so much into light, right? Not hide it, but bring it to light. All the offerings of the holy things which the Israelites offered to the Lord, I have given to you and to your sons and to your daughters and with a continual allotment. It is an everlasting covenant of salt that cannot be dissolved or violated before the Lord to you and to your descendants with you. That's a promise. That's a promise for your sons and your daughters and your descendants with you. That is big because that keeps us in line and in mind and brings us into the wholeness of God's blessing, of God's protection, of the covenant. Did you, had, did you guys forget or had you guys read that, the covenant of salt? Like really, there's a covenant with salt? <laughs> there is with the Lord, and it's related to our love, our relationship with him, and for others. That's a covenant the Lord has made with us as believers. He's kept that covenant, and we're also commanded to keep it. 
Wow. Verse 19. Yeah, that just, it pierces with salt. <laughs> and this you don't take with a grain of salt because I'm not exaggerating or making something up. No, like, take this in whole. <laughs> because there's nothing exaggerated here. This is the word of God, and it's, and it's amazing. What God does. It cannot be dissolved or violated before the Lord. That's what salt helps maintain. That it keeps it, it preserves it. The relationship with God through Christ. Another Old Testament example, let's go to Ezekiel 43.24. Talking about altar sacrifice and offerings unto the Lord. I'm going to read 23. I just put 24 on my notes, but I'm also going to read 23. When you have finished cleansing it, you shall offer a young bull without blemish and a ram from the flock without blemish. You shall present them before the Lord, and the priest shall throw salt on them, and they shall offer them up as a burnt offering to the Lord. How do you present an offering to the Lord? How do you prepare? Put some salt in it. <laughs> Throw yourself in there because we are the salt of the earth. So we put ourselves wholly as an offering to the Lord because it is pleasing. So that's a sacrifice because it's an offering we're giving to the Lord. A sacrifice and an offering and how we prepare it and how we do it now for ourselves too. What happens? It enhances the flavor, making food more enjoyable. I know when I put salt and pepper and sometimes, you know, some spice, some heat in it, or some rosemary, or even like some, I'm, tr I'm trying to think of like other spices I use. <laughs> I stick to maybe about six to 10 of the same spices, but I like it. I like the flavors that it gives the food I prepare. It becomes more flavorful, more enjoyable. It's awesome to taste something. Yesterday, uh, David and I had a burger, and the fries were amazing. And then we started eating the burger. Yeah, that's what we had yesterday for dinner. And the burger looked good. And we said to each other, I think the burger's good. Can you taste it? No, but I think it's good. So that made me think, oh, man, what am I eating? If I know it's a burger and it looks good, but it didn't really taste like a burger. <laughs> it's like, what happened? Could, did they really mess up the seasoning? How can you mess up a burger, please? But it happens, right? Because not everybody's cake that's in a box comes out the same. You guys know that, right? Ten people in a room could bake a cake from a box, and it won't taste the same. But, yeah, it was a little disappointing. I was like, I had to focus on the fries. Oh, the fries were good. <laughs> you know? So I enjoyed it, but I, I fooled myself that I enjoyed it fully. And I bring this forward because as Christians, in us in our faith, our actions also being the salt of the earth should enhance and bring joy to the world around us. That's the salt's role in preserving food and what we have to offer, what we can give. We, we give what the Lord has give, given us and it produces much. It increases the, the field, a good yield. The development of civilization in life, I also brought up, I'm gonna bring up that that helps with the development. You know the salt's been, it's been used since the beginning of time. But how it helps with products and food and all that, and I'm gonna compare it to how it is with the word of God and how we preserve it, because things get packed and shipped now. So food gets preserved and it lasts longer. So now I can go from one place of the eastern side to the west side, and like it could go on the ocean and food is being preserved. How you and I are also called to be the salt, and all of us live in different places, and there's other believers across the nation that live in other places, but the gospel is there, the gospel is here, the gospel is within you, the gospel is within me, and we use it for the land and the place the Lord has purposed us in. So no sea, no distance, none of that is going to stop us from who we are and what we can do. We're called to preserve our moral values. This is personal because when you preserve yourself, it keeps you with a right mind, right attitude, the righteousness to represent the Lord, to reflect. We could probably not all do a great job of representing God all the time. 
because what happens? We, we lose it. We're not always like, we're not on it, you know? We, we're not focused. But when we're focusing on God and the word of God and what he has done for us, what he continues to do for us, what he's doing for you, that gives us a joy to want to preserve ourselves more, but others. We don't just care about ourselves, our well-being. We care about others. I care about my children, my husband, and our family, about the church, our neighbors. Everybody's offer up in our prayers. How much more with salt in it? Like, Lord, this offering, the sacrifice, this praise that I bring to you, I will season it. And the Lord's going to be glorified because we're doing his will, his word. So what it does symbolically and spiritually in our lives, it preserves us from rotting. What it does in the physical, salt preserves me from rotting. How about us? It pre preserves us from decaying because we have the word of God. We're alive. And we're promised eternal life. So that, and with that knowledge, as believers, as followers, as disciples, we can distribute that also to one another. Around the world, I'm not saying we're going to get on a plane and do like a, you know, a mild trip or something or go cross country. Maybe you can. Thank God for those in do. But for us, we do it to our ability, to our capacity, to the distance that we're given. And you could go that extra mile. We can. Why? Because it's important. Because we don't want the world to die. We don't want them to die. We have life. We were granted life. So it's a duty for us to also do the same for others. Because if we lose our saltiness, how do you lose your saltiness? You compromise. I said this already, but we compromise. Um, we sigh with the world. And that sounds weird. I, I feel weird saying that, like, oh, the world, worldly. No, but it's just, it's contrary to who we are now. And not that we're better than the world, but we do have something that they need because we needed it also in our point in time of our life that they need also. This is something that I'm not making up. You know, you're in the world, but not of it. So that's where I got my peace to be able to say the world or in the world. Because, you know, a lot of people get turned off by that, like, oh, the worldly people, oh, their worldly ways. And it just sounds weird, like condescending. Is, I don't want to do that to anybody because I don't want to get spoken to like that either. But when you're doing it privately with the Lord and he's showing you through his word that you're in this world, but you're not of it. So then you have to know how to apply this and how to understand it with being the salt of the earth and not destroying, not killing crops, not killing the land, not killing people, not condemning them or shaming them, because we have no place to do that, but to preserve it. And if we love the world and its ways, instead of remaining godly and faithful to Jesus, because we follow the desires that we're warned not to, wealth and fame and luxury and pleasure, everything that's contrary to the Lord with immorality and lawlessness, then yeah, we're going to lose that salt. That's how you can lose your salt. When you're dipping yourself into that pool that you shouldn't be in. <laughs> because that leads us away from God. And that's how we lose our saltiness. Wow. I feel like I'm taking my own breath away and I'm taking your breath away, okay? <laughs> salt is important. I guess I, I wanted to bring salt packets but it was going to look weird that you come in and there's little salt packets, you know, it's like, what is this? And I don't want you guys to like, you know, hire your intake of it. But um, it's funny. There was a, a salt packet. I didn't purchase it, obviously, but it made me laugh because it said real salt. It has no additives. And is it real? Is your salt real? I was like, what? <laughs> is your salt real? So is the salt we have real? But I don't know, that was silly, but I'm not, you know, it was just like a funny thing. But um, yeah, that's why I didn't bring salt packets on your, your thing, okay? 
because a lot of them have chemicals added to it. And we can't have idolized salt, oh, idolized salt. You see, iodized. It has to be pure and it has to be real. Can it be raw? Can it be Himalayan? Yes, we're all changing to Himalayan salt. Ooh, pink salt. <laughs> sea salt. <laughs> I like it because it's grainy, you use less, you know. But definitely, it's used for the environment. It has an impact on it. For us, we also have that ability that how we impact with the saltiness we have. Are we being a source of salt, of light and hope? And how can we be the salt with our families, in our community, in our workplace? We're encouraged with this word that this is something that we do because bringing flavor, preservation, reflects God's character. And that's all the purpose we have, to reflect the love and the light of God. We don't hide our light under a bed. It shouldn't be hidden. It needs to be seen. So being the salt and being the light reflects God's character. We follow Christ. We follow Jesus. And we embrace our position, our role, mindful, being, being mindful of the impact that it gives to life and what it gives to you and me, what Saul has done for you. Even in our home, I'm thinking about when my kids were little, but I did this as a kid too, I practiced it, that if I would hit my head or scrape my knee, saliva, like lick my tongue, and rub it on my knee or rub it on my forehead, and that bump would go down. And sometimes you add salt and like, oh, you know, lick it, pon saliva and salt, and it'll go down. It does help. It reduces inflammation, you know? It helps. So I did that, it's, I know it's gross, sorry about that, but um, I won't shake your hand after, okay? <laughs> but it's salt heals saliva like it's something that we need and i'm not making it up okay you guys know in jesus he spat on the on the dirt he put it on the guy's eyes what happened yes he was able to see so it has value it's important don't get grossed out okay don't go spitting on each other okay <laughs> but if you have that deficiency then you won't be able to spit because then <laughs> I need some water for that. <laughs> I bring this up because it went perfectly with what we're learning, with being the light, remaining faithful, with not giving up, trusting God. Trusting God, seeking him, and how we offer our, our sacrifices to him. A new way to put to perspective on how we offer a sacrifice to God. It has to be seasoned with flavor. It has to be with purity and preservation because God is holy God. And he says, be holy for I am holy. And we, we can do that without compromising, without adding your own thing, without adding another element, a foreign element that the body's gonna reject because when the body's rejecting something, it's gonna start to die. But when you have what gives life and what is good, it helps us. It helps me, it helps you. To be salt of the earth. Jesus spoke this to his disciples, to be the salt of the earth, living out our faith in a way that endures and influences our surrounding for the glory of God, for his kingdom, for the purpose in our lives that he has called. That's another purpose you have, to be salt of the earth. He called attention for us to pay attention. In the Beatitudes, he's talking about what's going to take place, but what we need to do. So we're called. God is calling attention. He's calling our attention for us to continue to do the work in Christ, to preserve the truth the way it was made, the way it needs to be. The word of God has to be pure. It has to be clear. It has to give life. It has to endure as we also endure. Because we have to endure. Because life, man, life gets hard. Life is hard. <laughs> but it's not as hard as we think. When you remember that we can endure. And that we're not just in one place, but we're everywhere. 
and we don't want to be thrown out and walked on by people. We don't want to be useless believers. Why did you come this far in your faith to turn it all around, to give it up, so the world can walk all over you, so that your testimony has no influence, so that where you came from has no value anymore because they're like, I knew it. It was just temporary. It was just a season. No, we're called to be in it in season, out of season, all the time, at all times. Because that's going to break our heart if we just walk away. And the, the impact that we're going to create if we choose to abandon our first love, to lose our saltiness. What the Lord does with salt, it helps retain water, especially talking about farming and how the Lord relates it. Adding salt to the water helps retain moisture. So there's life, there's production. So if our life is challenging, remember you have the salt in you. You are the salt of the earth. And whatever's barren in us or within us, the Lord's going to bring to life because we are that salt. And now we're going to be filled. Where barren land was, now there's going to be water. Now there's going to be crops. Now there's going to yield its portion. This is us right now. The fruits of our labor, the fruits of your labor. We're yielding together, building together, being the salt of the earth for a purpose, to preserve the truth in its entirety. Because many still have to know about Jesus. And we're not going to condemn them and judge them, but we're going to share the good news. Because you preserve what is right, what is good, what lasts. And the word of God lasts and it's forever and it remains. No one can destroy that. The word of God is powerful. It's eternal. It's forever. The way he is everlasting, that's his word. I want to be a land that becomes fruitful. Because what happens then? The people of God are redeemed because when many come to know the good news, there's redemption, there's hope, there's life, there's salvation. And now there's a joy, something worthy to shout. There is joy, joy in the house of the Lord, joy in our hearts, and joy as we reflect the love of God, the character of God in being the salt. Something simple, a salt. And I thank you for enduring for allowing me to, to impart this preservation part of our faith in Christ, that we remember to, to keep what is holy, holy, to keep it pure, to maintain it so that it can be good, so that our purpose doesn't go out the window. Because we have a hope, we have a future, and the Lord says it is for good. It is to prosper us. And that is to make us new. Amen. The Lord says, behold, I make all things new. Behold, Amen. behold, pay attention to it. Behold, see what I'm doing. You are the salt of the earth. That's simple. You are the salt of the earth. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for his word. For his faithfulness. His word, one word can like just open up our heart even more. It can enlarge it. And he extends the place that we stand. That's how good he is. That it is to yield a crop. It is to expand and to grow. Definitely retain. I was thinking of a funny thing about like retaining water. You know, you consume a lot of salt. It's like, oh man, I'm retaining water. My pants don't fit. I'm retaining water. Oh, my feet don't fit into my shoes anymore. <laughs> you know? But spiritually, it's a good thing because it's something that we hold on to. The Lord is naturally in the physics that he made us to be able to withhold everything that he gives us to our capacity. That's our God. He's so good and so faithful. And I, once again, I want to thank you for, for enduring and for remaining and being preserved with me as also I'm being preserved in reading this word and having the privilege to share it with you that it's not something new. 
but it's just a reminder of God's goodness, of his mercy and his grace and his love for us, his love for the world. Because we know what John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So those that don't believe already, already stand condemned and judged. But we believe. Today we have life. And the Lord is commanding us to offer our sacrifice to him seasoned with salt. Because that covenant he made with us, he's not breaking. We're the only ones that break things. We break things. The Lord doesn't. So it's just a reminder to remain faithful, for he is faithful. And he's coming. We endure. Today, don't compromise. Don't compromise your faith. Don't compromise because of a situation of something that you're going through. Don't give up the faith. Remain. Fight the good fight of faith. Remain. We need to remain and be encouraged that we need one another. This we do not selfishly, but for one another, because God loves us so much. And to be an example for others, that's something that nobody wants to do. But today, we just hear the word of the Lord and remain. Remain faithful. He is faithful. Be holy, for I am holy. And the benefits of being in God's presence God is good. So today as we, we come to a close for service, I'm going to offer up a prayer to the Lord and just trust him for his word, for his goodness, for his mercy, for his love for us, and for the needs of his house and his people. And for every each and every one of you, what you need from the Lord, a touch, healing, word of encouragement, a blessing, the word of God has it, and he gives it to us freely. All we have to do is ask, and we will receive. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day, Lord, thanking you, Lord, for your word, for your goodness, your mercy, your faithfulness, Lord, your long-suffering, Father, for loving us so much, Lord, for giving us, Lord Jesus, words of encouragement to remember how great and how faithful you are. Father, thank you. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your house. Thank you for your people. Thank you for your people, Lord, your sons and daughters, Father, because this blessing, Father, Lord, and this preservation is for your sons and your daughters, Lord, and for their household, Lord, their children and their children for generations, Lord. This is how we preserve the goodness of God and what you've given us, Lord, to keep to keep in our hearts, Lord, in our mind, and not let go. Thank you, Lord, for the healing upon your sons and your daughters, upon your children, my brothers and sisters, Lord, for healing their mind, Lord, their bodies, their nerves, their vessels, their nerve endings, Lord, everything, their cells, removing what is not good, Lord, what needs to be pushed out, because your word does that, Father. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. And your people, Lord, need healing, need peace, comfort, a touch, Lord, to feel refreshed and to remember how empowered they are by your, by your love and your hand because you love them, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for my brothers and sisters this day. Thank you for meeting their needs, Lord, for providing what they need for this day, Lord, and for the days you have numbered for them. I thank you, Lord, for the love that you have for them and that today that they are, that they are, Lord Jesus, being preserved by you. Thank you, Lord, that there's not one thing you don't know about each and every one of us. You are so mindful of us, Lord. The thoughts you have towards us, Lord, are a number, the grain of sand, the grains in the sand, Lord. You are so good, Lord, to know every detail and to love us individually on a personal level, Lord. Intimately revealing yourself to us Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness and your love that endures forever. 
Thank you. In Jesus' name, we bless your house, your people, your sons and your daughters, Lord. Today, tomorrow, forever, Lord, until the day of your return, Lord Jesus, we will remember your words and not just keep them, Father, but take them to heart and live it out the way your disciples lived out in the old times, Father, Lord, with the, every requirement that you had for them, that we will also remember to love you, to trust you, to be obedient to your word, and to know that we have life everlasting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And that concludes today. You can walk around, be the salt to one another, and just give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Amen. God bless you.